Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain about uh, the problems on full wave rectifier. Okay. So here I am taking the first problem that is nothing but here we have here I am considering the center tap transformer that is full wave rectifier. Okay. So here a full wave rectifier circuit uses two silicon diodes with the forward resistance of 20 ohms each. So what is here we have is a full wave rectifier that is nothing but uh, here we have. So this is the full wave rectifier what we have. This one is load and this one is diode D1 and D2. Right. So this is the center tap transformer. So here a full wave rectifier circuit uses two silicon diodes with a forward resistance of uh, 20 ohms each. A DC voltmeter connected across the load of 1 kilo ohm reads 55.4 volts then calculate IRMS value, average voltage across each diode, ripple factor and transformer secondary voltage rating. So here what is given in this problem is, so here we are using the two diodes D1 and D2 and they, and they are made with the silicon. Okay, that is nothing but the silicon diodes. So here we have two diodes of silicon and each having that RF is equal to that is forward resistance is equal to 20 ohms. So given that uh, RF is equal to 200 ohms, sorry here it is 200 ohms. So here we have RF is 200 ohms and a load is connected that is nothing but RL that is 1 kilo ohm, RL is equal to 1 kilo ohm and that voltmeter reads how much here 55.4 volts voltmeter dc voltmeter it is given that dc voltmeter so here it is given as vdc is equal to 55.4 volts okay now what we have to find out here that we have to find out irms value next average voltage across each diode and ripple factor and transformer secondary voltage rating okay so these are the things we have to find out uh, uh, out of this given data so here RF is equal to 200 ohms, RL is equal to 1 kilo ohm and VDC is equal to 55.4. But here what is not given here? It is not given that is what the maximum voltage Vm is not given. So we have to find out. Instead of that, it is given that VDC is given as 55.4 volts. So VDC, we know that VDC for a full wave rectifier is equal to 2 Vm by 5. And it is given as 55.4 volts. Right. From this one we can find out the Vm. Okay. So that is what we are uh, we are doing here. So Vdc is equal to 2 Vm by 5. But we have to calculate this one Vm. So what is the value here? Vdc into pi by 2. So Vdc is what? 55.4 volts. I am substituting here. Multiply with pi by 2. So that is nothing but Vm here we have. So what you will get the maximum voltage is 86.9 volts. Okay. So this is the maximum voltage. Once, already I told that once if you find the maximum voltage, you can calculate all the parameters for the rectifier. So what we have to calculate here? IRMS. So if you want to calculate IRMS means it is mandatory to calculate uh, the maximum current. So maximum current is equal to IM is equal to VM by RF plus RL. Actually IM is equal to Vm by Rl plus Rf plus Rs. But here it is not given this Rs is nothing but the secondary uh, transformer resistance. Here we are neglecting that one. Okay. So it becomes what Im is equal to Vm by Rl plus Rf. So it is Rl is given and Rf is given. Rl is what? 1 kilo ohm and Rf is equal to 200 ohms. So therefore we are substituting here that is IM is equal to VM by RF plus RL. So VM is what here? That is nothing but 86.9 by RF plus RL. So therefore, IM is equal to 86.4 by 200 plus 1000. 1 kilo ohm RL. So it is nothing but 86.4 by 1200. So what you will get here? It is 0 0.08519 amperes. So that is the maximum current. Okay, so what is the IRMS value for a full wave rectifier? 
Okay, IRMS value for halfway rectifier is IM by 2. For a full way rectifier, it is IM by root 2. So, therefore, IRMS is equal to IM by root 2. So, IM is what? 0 0.08519 by root 2. So, if you do that calculation, you will get the 0 0.06024 amperes. Okay, like this, to calculate the IRMS, first we have to calculate VDC. Okay, so VDC is given that formula we are using to find out the VM, that is maximum voltage. So after finding the VM, so I am calculating IM because, because IRMS we have to find out this IRMS is equal to IM by root 2. So that's why we don't know the IM but we know the VM value we have calculated. So from that VM we can find out IM by using this formula that is VM by RF plus RL. So we will get like this. That is IRMS is equal to IM by root 2 that is equal to 0 0.06024 uh, amperes. Okay. So this is the first problem. Next one is what? Average voltage across each diode. Okay. So the average voltage across each diode is nothing but if you consider that value V is equal to Vm by Vm by 2. Okay. So here we are applying this voltage here is Vm and Vm. Okay, so therefore average voltage is nothing but Vm by 2. So that is Vm by 2, 86.9 by 2, that is average voltage we are getting across each diode. So that is nothing but 43.45 volts. So now what we have to factor, uh, calculate is ripple factor. So we have the generalized formula, that is ripple factor value. Ripple factor will be indicated with gamma here or smaller and it is square root of IRMS by IDC whole square minus 1 or VRMS by VDC whole square minus 1 with square root. So another formula is also there for us. So that is nothing but VRMS by VDC whole square minus 1. So this is another formula. So we have generalized the equation for the ripple factor in terms of uh, uh, resist uh, voltage and at the same time the current. So this, this, these are the equations we have for ripple factor that is IRMS square, IRMS by IDC whole square minus 1. But here we have calculated IRMS value and we have to calculate, we don't know the IDC value so we have to find out that IDC value. So IDC is equal to what? 2 IM by pi. So this is the formula for IDC. Already IM is calculated and if you substitute this IM value here, so you get the IDC. So we have calculated IDC and IRMS. IRMS is this one. So, if you substitute this IDC and IRMS values in this equation, that is nothing but uh, 0 0.06024 by 0 0.05423 whole square minus 1. So, if you substitute and if you calculate, you will get the 0 0.48. So, this is the ripple factor for these calculations, right? Next, what we have? Transformer secondary voltage rating. So, generally, whatever the transformer uh, voltage we are getting, that is from this one, from the secondary, that is nothing but the RMS value of the uh, transformer voltage or the input value. So, that VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2. So, Vm already we know that 86.9 volts. So, if you substitute in this one, you will get what? The VRMS value. That is nothing but the transformer secondary voltage rating. Okay. So, this is the problem on problem number one on this full wave rectifiers. Okay, now we have the second problem, problem number two here. A 230 volts, 60 hertz voltage is applied to the primary of a 5 is to 1 step down center tap transformer used in the full wave rectifier. Having a load resistance of 900 ohms, if the diode resistance and the secondary coil resistance together has a resistance of 100 ohms, then calculate the DC voltage across the load, DC current flowing through the load and DC power delivered to the load and the ripple voltage and its frequency. So this is the problem given. So we will write here what is the given data. So here we have 230 volts 60 H. So therefore the primary winding voltage is nothing but uh, VPRMS that is equal to 230 volts and frequency is equal to 50 edges, sorry 60 edges, frequency is 60 edges, right, so that is the first one, 
uh, next it is applied to the primary winding uh, a primary of a 5 is to 1 step down transformer so what is this 5 is to 1 is nothing but the turns ratio okay the primary winding and secondary winding turns ratio so that i will take it as here n1 is to n2 and that is given as 5 is to 1 okay so now and at the same time the load resistance rl is equal to 900 ohms and we have that given that uh, the secondary winding resistance and the diode resistance together has a 100 ohms that is rl plus rs okay secondary coil resistance and it has a diode resistance combinedly we have is 100 ohms right so now what we have to calculate so to calculate this DC value, DC current or DC power delivered, we have to calculate first uh, the maximum voltage. So to calculate the maximum voltage, we require the calculation of secondary voltage value. Okay. So now we have one relation between the turns ratio and primary winding and secondary winding voltages. Okay. So actually that is N1 by N2 is equal to Vp by Vs. But here we are using the center tap transformer. It is given that the center tap transformer. So compulsory we have to consider instead of Vs here, we have to consider two Vs. Because here it is center tap transformer. It will supply of the cycle for this one and this one. Okay. So that's why we have to consider two Vs. So therefore, I am taking N2 by N1, here N1 by N2 is there, that is N2 by N1, that is equal to 2 Vs RMS by Vp RMS. Okay, so therefore, why we have considered this 2 Vs? Because here we are using the center tapped transformer. So because this one is, we are using center tapped transformer. Center tapped transformer. That's why we are going to use here 2 into Vs by Vp. But actual formula is N1 by N2 is equal to Vp by Vs. So now if you simplify and if you substitute N1 is to N2 is actually 5 is to 1. But here we have taken N2 is to 1 that is N2 by N1. So that we, that is nothing but 1 by 5 that is equal to 2 Vs RMS by Vp RMS. So therefore 1 by 5 2 Vs RMS and Vp is what? That is given as 230 volts. So if you simplify this one, so you will get here is what? So Vs RMS is equal to 230 volts by 10. That is 5 into 2. So you will get 230 by 10. So you will get 23 volts for each half cycle. So the Vs is nothing but what? Uh, 223 volts. Now what we have here? From this Vs, we can calculate the maximum. That is, from the secondary voltage, we can calculate the maximum voltage. So, that maximum voltage. Why we are ca calculating that maximum voltage means to calculate all these parameters. All these parameters, we require the calculation of maximum voltage. That maximum voltage Vm is equal to root 2 into Vs RMS. Okay. So, that is Vs RMS means what we have here. Vs, Vs is we got is nothing but uh, that is 23. So its Vm value is root to 23 volts. Right. Now what we have to do here, we have to calculate uh, the DC voltage across the load. And at the same time DC current flowing through the load. So we require the knowledge of calculating this Im. So Im is equal to what? Vm by Rl plus Rf plus Rs. Here all the resistances are given. So directly we can substitute that one to calculate the IM. So IM is equal to VM by RL plus RS plus RF. VM is given as root 2, 23. So by that RL is given as what? 900 and RS plus RF is given as 100 ohms. So if you substitute that one, root 2 into 23 by 1000. So what you will get here? 0 0.03252 amperes. So this is what the maximum current and maximum voltage. So if you know the maximum current and maximum voltage, you can easily calculate uh, the IDC and VDC and all those things, all the parameters. So I require the knowledge of uh, calculating this IDC. 
IDC is equal to for a full wave center tap rectifier, it is 2 IM by pi. IM is already calculated, therefore IDC is equal to 2 multiply with IM by pi. So 2 multiply with IM is what you got? That is 0.03252 amperes. So if I substitute that one, you will get this value. 2 into 0.03252 by pi. So what you are getting here, that is IDC is equal to 0.02 0 0.07 amperes okay now what we have to calculate so dc voltage we have to calculate the dc voltage across the load is in nothing but uh, average value of the dc voltage vdc is equal to 2 vm by 5 for the full wave rectifier okay so 2 multiply with vm is root 2 23 that is 2 vm means 2 root 2 23 by 5 if you calculate that you will get the 20.7 volts so the first one is over and the second one is also over. Now what we have to calculate here, the DC power delivered to the load. DC power delivered to the load. That is PDC is equal to VDC into IDC. So actually power is equal to V into I. So here we require the DC power, PDC is equal to VDC into IDC. So already we have calculated VDC and IDC. If you substitute and if you calculate, so you will get this value. So VDC is 20.7 and IDC is 0 0.0207 so that you will get approximately that is 0.4 watts of PDC that is DC power. Okay, now what is what we have is we have to calculate uh, peak inverse voltage. So what is peak inverse voltage means for a uh, full wave rectifier it is 2 VM. So that is nothing but the peak inverse voltage is equal to 2 into Vm is what root 2 23 so we will get what peak inverse voltage has 46 uh, root 2 so that's what you will get 60.508538 volts okay so this is what we have now what is the final one here ripple voltage and its frequency so here we it is not given that uh, ripple factor so we will directly consider that ripple factor is equal to here 0 0.48 if you consider that one, ripple factor is equal to VR RMS by RMS value of the ripple by uh, VDC. Okay, so from this one you can calculate VR RMS that is ripple voltage that is equal to the assumption that is 0 0.48 multiply with the, the multiply with the VDC. Okay, so therefore you will get his here it is 9.97 volts. Next, what we have here, we have to calculate the ripple frequency. The ripple frequency is in full wave rectifier, it is 2F. So F is given as 60H. If we substitute that F, you will get 120H. Okay, so this is about uh, the problem number 2. Okay, so here in off wave rectifier or full wave rectifier or bridge rectifier, so we need uh, the formulas. Okay, if you thorough with the formulas, you can easily do the all these problems. Okay. So only the numericals will change. So if you change the numericals, automatically the values will be different. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe our channel.